Como arigado, Mr. Roboto. Ow! Ow! Hello, everybody. This is Joey Fireflame talking. And that thing right there, that was, um... I was just trying to stick to the theme of this death battle. Yeah, yeah, yes, quite, quite. Yes, quite, quite. Because what is the theme of this, but this death battle is... Robots. Two evil fighting robots. Between Fulgore of Killer Instinct and Sector from Mortal Kombat. I know absolutely nothing about these two. I have never played a Killer Instinct, I have never played a Mortal Kombat, so I am basically just new to the full characters. I am completely blind. So who do I think is going to win? I have no idea. Let's find the, uh, let's see the analysis and find out, shall we? Fulgore versus Sector. In three, two, one. This episode of Death Battles brought to you by SGC. Pre-register for the greatest video game party ever at sgconvention.com. Which I wish I could. But it's overseas. Cyborgs are fucking badass! Yeah. As someone with my own cybernetic arm that suffers constant glitches, I have to agree, cyborgs are awesome. Like Fulgore, the metal monster of Killer Instinct. And Sector, the ninja cyborg from Mortal Kombat. Totally should have been Cyrex. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Oh, sorry. Arms glitching up again. Uh... When you least expect it, Wiz. When you least expect it. It would have been obvious, but he's oh well. Boomstick, and it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Which one of these are the best? Let's find out. In the dystopian world of Killer Instinct, there are no governments, no courts, no nations. Oh. There is only the mega corporation that controls the Earth. Walmart, um, Ultratech! To tighten his iron grip even further, Ultratech's chairman plotted to build an army is of cybernetic fisk? enforcers. Thus, he created the deadly, sadistic prototype known as Fulgore. So, he was a warrior? Like a futuristic policeman? Fulgore. Now there's a name that will strike fear into your enemies. Just saying it gives me chills. Standing six feet, five inches, with over 500 pounds of reinforced steel, Fulgore is a brutal killing machine. All while rocking a stylish ponytail. Ah, Even Seagal cool. would be proud. Actually, to dupe people into trusting their cyborgs, Ultratech cleverly designed Fulgore to look the part of an honorable knight, oh. helmet plume included. Call it what you want, Wiz. That's a ponytail. Before testing the it prototype works. even began, Ultratech had sold over 15 million Fulgore units worldwide. Ugh. And if Robocop's Ed 209 has taught us anything, that's a bad idea. Eey. Someone that finally seems still had the bright idea to see if this thing even worked and entered Fulgore into Ultratech's annual Killer Instinct tournament. Hmm. Sure enough, there was a major problem. Fulgore's mechanical body was so advanced, Ultratech's top scientists could not create an artificial intelligence that could operate it efficiently. Fulgore needed the mind of a true fighting spirit. Okay, so what did they do? Enter Eagle, the older brother of current KI combatant, Chief Thunder. Eagle had entered a previous KI tournament and won. He used his newfound fame to publicly protest the evils of Ultratech. The people rallied. Talk of revolution began to see. Oh. But then some guy at Ultratech, probably the dude who wanted to test Fulgore, was like, hey, let's kill Eagle, stop his revolution, then rip out his brain and drop it in our robot. Eagle mysteriously disappeared, Fulgore started kicking ass, and that guy probably got a promotion. Ah. With the implanted mind of Eagle, Fulgore effortlessly smashed through foe after foe. However, Eagle still lived somewhere within, constantly fighting to overcome his malicious programming and horribly ironic situation. Fulgore draws from Eagle's traditional Okichita fighting style, which crosses Judo, Taekwondo, and Hapkido with short-ranged blades. Oh. Like his Quad Plasma Claws, which can cut through almost any metal with temperatures over 30,000 degrees. That is hot! In addition, no he's equipped with everything a badass killer cyborg should have. Plasma Storm Fireballs, a reflector to bounce back projectiles, okay. a cyber port, a cloaking device, and laser eyes for flare. Every cyber assassin in these cloaking devices, short, like it's a must. Fulgore uses one of four overwhelming finishers called No Mercy. Oh, oh dear! <laughs> even, where was he keeping that? What? And how can he see where he's aiming? Fulgore's strength is staggering, but where does all this power come from? 
hidden within his armor chassis is that giant fucking turret somehow a nuclear reactor oh. which powers everything at his disposal Volgor can manually overclock this reactor increasing its charge multiple times at max charge, he gains a massive power increase, doubling his speed and allowing him to fire a giant laser of doom, the Devastation Beam. I really... Oh, that was a thing we saw before. With something like that, he's got to be unstoppable. Yeah. Almost. Oh. Until he met the warrior monk, Jago, who literally tore him apart. Oh. Despite the dismemberment, Ultratech still had plans for their mechanical butcher. He was rebuilt, stronger, faster, and reprogrammed with a new mission. Find and kill his They have the technology. Jago, a mission Fulgore never completed. He came so close, but then the little wuss called in his god-slaying sister Orchid and double-teamed him into destruction. Still, Fulgore is a monster, annihilating anyone who gets in his way. Well, nearly anyone. Bitch. Still pretty impressive, considering how strong he must be. So Sector does that. He has his challenges. So what can you tell me about Sector? Earth was in grave danger. The interdimensional overlord Shao Kahn was one victory away from conquering the human world. In order to stack up with Khan's invading monsters, the Grand Master of the Lin Kuei Clan of Assassins came up with a plan so crazy, it just might work. Let's turn all of our ninjas into robots. That guy's my fucking hero. Thus, the Cyber Initiative was created. The first and only willing member of the Lin Kuei to undergo the mechanization was the Grandmaster's own son, Sector. Who names their kid Sector? It's like the day his child was born. He's like, I'm gonna give you this cool cyber name just in case I ever pull off my crazy as shit plan to turn everyone I know into robots. Okay. I will shoot you, Percy. Sector was already an unrivaled assassin and master of ninjutsu, sambo, and kenpo. As a cyborg, he's all that, plus extra armor and a never-ending supply of missiles. Why would a ninja, master of the silent kill, use a missile launcher? He's also got two flamethrowers on his I wrist. I know about it. Yes, very pistol, a disturbing rocket punch, uh, and lightsabers. They're actually called pulse blades. They're definitely lightsabers. Sweet royalty-free lightsabers. And who doesn't love lightsabers? Okay. This isn't one of this this isn't the fatality I thought about. The other one is more disturbing. To close a kill, Sector finishes foes with a brutal fatality. Mm -hmm. Like the Robosec, Missile Strike, or the Compactor. The Compact Oh! Okay, how do these robo guys keep all this impossible shit in their chests? Yeah. Do they have black holes for hearts or something? Regardless Maybe. of the storage quandary, Sector's compactor can crush a human being in mere seconds. At minimum, crushing an entire human body into paste requires nearly two tons of pressure. The new Sector proved invaluable, aiding Shao Kahn in multiple Mortal Kombat tournaments against the defenders of humanity. And after Khan discovered a loophole around the tournament's rules, Sector led the Lin Kuei in the invasion of Earthrealm. But despite the pure badassery of being a Robo Ninja, not everybody wanted to do it. No! Fearing the loss of mind and soul, a few Lin Kuei managed to escape. Sector was tasked with hunting these traitors and dragging them back to the Grand Master, dead or alive. The list of defectors included a young ninja named Sub Zero. And that is true. Mega Sector was nearly unstoppable. He slaughtered the clan's enemies by the dozens without so much as batting a robo eye. But no matter how hard he tried, he could never take down that poster boy, Sub Zero. Nope. Until Raiden reset the timeline and practically gift wrapped him. However, yep. Sector's transformation was not perfect. While his cybernetics enhanced his body, they had a different effect on his mind. In just a few years, Sector unraveled, tumbling deeper and deeper into an unescapable well of insanity. Oh. Mad with power, Sector murdered his own father, intending to claim the title of Grandmaster for himself. Until Sub-Zero showed up and totally ninja that shit, and then kicked him out of the Lin Kuei for good. What's with Sub-Zero being a total buskill? Sector was alone his only companions the twisted voices in his head. Oh. Eventually, he managed to found his own clan of cyber warriors, the Takunin. Sector now roams the realms, hungry for mortal combat. <laughs>
Mortal Kombat! Do, 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 You actually did it. You're a cyborg. We are the Lin Kuei, more stealthful than the night. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. Okay, and side up. Okay. So each of the robot assassins have their strengths, clearly, and they seem very equal. I kind of having a kind of a hard time trying to decide which one are like uh, the better when it comes to the battle. Uh, Sector seems more agile, more ninja-like, while. Uh, Fulgore is way more destructive and clearly has the more powerful weapons if used correctly. Hmm. I always love a good ninja, so I guess I have to settle with Sector. I bet on that he's going to win. If he's not, oh well. Anyway guys, let's return back to the death battle in 3, 2, 1, play! Okay, that's- oh. Okay, let us see if I'm right. Forward. Ow, ow, ow. Oh god, he's building his thing up. The <laughs> lightsabers, the light moves next sad. Oh, wow, 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 that hurts, that hurts, that hurts. That hurts. Ooh, combo breaker indeed. Oh god, I have a feeling that full core is going to build up all the things. Oh dear. Missile incoming! Ooh. I thought it was going Batman there, just running all the lights. Oh! He... Can full core hold it? Oh, I hear the come, here the pain comes. Station Beam lives up to its name. This was a close one. With his ninja ability, Sector could easily outmaneuver Fulgor's bulk. But Fulgor had the edge in every other category. He had more options for defensive, close, and long range combat. Being almost twice as big, his size and strength surmounted Sector's. No. And whenever Sector did get an upper hand, Fulgor simply overclocked his reactor to compensate. And while neither of them have successfully defeated their rivals, Sector has been humiliated by Sub-Zero over and over. But Fulgor would have won his second duel with Jago if Orchid hadn't stepped in. It took the combined might of two demigod killers to take Fulgor down. In the end, Sector got row blown up. The winner is Fulgor. Well, I was right. Kind of. Is there a next time? Next okay, next time. time. Who will Death be Battle. the next arena? this it sounds very big someone I know Godzilla versus who hey thanks for watching this latest episode of death battle be sure to like and subscribe and okay so that was the death battle who will go up against King Kong? I mean, uh, Godzilla. King Kong? Did I just make a prophecy of the next death battle? I have no idea. Anyway guys, that was the death battle between Fulgore and Sector. I was right in that uh, Fulgore had much more strength and destructive abilities and weapons. But I thought that quick agile and, a pre and precise ninja strike would destroy him. Oh well. Just teaches me to weigh out the options. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this little commentary and reaction of the death battle. Like, favorite, comment and subscribe if you want more. And I will see you guys next time!